If you ever start a job where, to get it completed, you've got to do three others beforehand, well, I'm in that situation. Just look at these brassicas now, them coming on rather quickly. And I'm not quite ready to put them out yet, probably the next week or so, but, and to slow them down, I was going to put them into the coal frame. But to get into the coal frame, it's full at the moment. I've got my first early potatoes in there and also some um, gladioli. So in order to make room and get the potatoes out onto the bed, I need to clear the bed where the potatoes are going. So it's, uh, it's a vicious circle. Anyway, let's carry on and do it. I've lined the potatoes up there. Them are the second early of Charlotte and the Saipan made of main crop. And this is the bed them going on. So I'm just in the process of weeding this. I'll level it off and then I'll give it a good dressing of horse manure and then nestle the buckets in the middle of it. Oh, it looks like we've been met with a glorious start to the day. I'll just bring you up to date what we did yesterday. After weeding that bed, level it off, raked it, and I've given it a good top dressing of horse manure. As you can see, this is quite fresh, new, it hasn't rotted down much, but that's not to worry because I'm just going to place the potato buckets containers on top. Last night I did put a little bit of debris netting over the top, mainly just to keep the fox out because he does come down during the daytime. So that's the potato bed done for this year. Glad that's all over. As you can see, there's one or two of the containers need topping up. It's amazing how they've sunk. And uh, so I've got four Saipan Mira at the back. There's 12 Charlotte in the centre. And right at the very front is four rows of Swift. You can see them quite well advanced. I planted them probably about a week before the others, but they've been in the cold frame, and obviously with the extra heat with the lights on. And all told, the manure, I think I put about, I'd say about 300 litres on. So I'm going to give these, top dress the tops just to bring the bucket levels up, give them a good watering, and that's about it. I've given the brassicas a good watering and they seem to be doing okay. So these potatoes here, these are the first earlies, and I planted them a few days after the ones in the big 30 litre containers. And you can see these are much farther advanced. And that's purely having the glass on top with a bit of extra heat. Anyway, weather permitting, I want to begin the brassicas out within the next couple of weeks. Well, I just want to show you this, this beautiful blossom on the pear tree. And if that's anything to go by, we could be in for another good fruit in year. You join me in the greenhouse on what appears to be a beautiful summer's day. It's quite warm outside, still a biting cold wind, and we've actually got frost forecasts over the weekend for the next few days. So if you've got anything outside tender, get the fleeces ready. The um, reason I'm in the greenhouse at the moment is that I had a little mail call, and it's from Bill and Valium. You might remember on the last video I said they was kind enough to be sending me some melon seed and I've got the packet here and not only did they send me melon seed there's a few other things as well. I've got some Pongo dwarf beans. Now I think I must be the only one on YouTube that's not grown there. Pongo dwarf beans everybody seems to have been supplied with them so I'm going to put a few of those in. I've got some Ne Plus Ultra Peas. Never ever grown them before. Kent blue peas, never ever ground them before, and as I said previously, Minnesota midget melons. So I'm going to be popping all of those into the compost now while the weather's still warm, and hopefully they'll be on their merry way. So once again, thanks very much for Bill and Val for sending them, and I'll put a little link down the bottom if you want to pop off and see them. So I'm going to crack on now. That's the potting up done. I've done about five. Minnesota midget melons in that little seven centimeter pot. Then I've done 10 of the Pongo beans. And in there, the peas, this is the Nepros Ultra. I've actually put about three or four in each cell. So there's five there and just spin the tray around. 
and on that side I've got the same with the Kent Blue. So uh, thank the pig's going to stay out and the beans, but the Minnesota Midget, I'm going to pop that into the little Vita pot. It's got a little bit of bottom meat on around about 15 degrees and that'll keep them ticking over. Now the weeding's done, this is the brassica bed, so there's really no more to do with it. The surface is quite firm really because it's been had the covers over, most of it over the winter. And uh, the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to lightly tittle the top with that uh, wolf soil tiller. And that there is because I want to give it a little bit of treatment just before I plant it. Because this site here suffers heavily with club root, we had to try and counteract it on the brassicas. Normally, I used to use a little liquid called our melatox, but that got took off the market, and that was quite effective. So the next best thing that I've found is this stuff, and this is called Perlka. I'll put a little link at the bottom, and this is in granular form. Just put it onto the surface. When it rains, it converts this to hydrated lime, which is a real good barrier in the fight against the club root. Here in the Midlands, the last few days, there's been some glorious sunshine. But we have got a warning coming in that the next three or four nights, potentially we could hit zero or even below. But nevertheless, these tomatoes right behind me need potting on, so I'm going to be doing those next. Right, ready to roll. As you can see, these this is a Crimson Crush. Start to get a leg in there because it's ram-packed shoulder to shoulder with us. But not to worry, I'll just take the bottom leaf off and I think we'll... That'll be all right. It'll start to spruce up once it gets into a bigger pot. These are the pots that I'm putting them in. And I'll, I'll plant these real deep just to keep the foliage down low. And this will be the last potting on then until they actually go into the auto pot system in the other greenhouse. I've mixed the potting compost up. It's uh, Bathgate's multi-purpose. I've had some uh, vermiculite and also I'll put Vitax Q4 in there. I was going to use charge, but I'm running out of that and I want to save that for the onions. So I've given that a, a little mix in there and I'm going to be potting them on. As I said earlier, we could be having a few frosty nights at the moment. So the other thing I need to do is top the diesel later up and I'll be able to flick that and if the temperatures drop below five. Being on the allotment, we quite often get a few stray racing pigeons dropped down. Obviously they're mongry and lost their way home. But recently I've had another pigeon coming and he's like a, what they call a tumbler where they, they'll fly and actually drop from the sky. He's got a ring on but he's been on the allotment now for probably well over a week and he's, he's took a fancy to me. He keeps following me everywhere and quite often he'll, he'll just land on the greenhouse and just watch what I'm doing. And there he is, he's a beautiful bird. I've put some water out and I've got a few grey peas as well I'm going to give him. After potting the tomatoes on, I've actually brought them down to the allotment greenhouse. These are more crimson crush so far. I brought them down there because the lighting's better and it'll reduce them from going straggly. But saying that, we have got a low temperature forecast tonight, possibly zero. So I'm going to be popping a bit of fleece over the top. I did mention earlier that it was going to drop cold tonight and I can definitely feel the temperatures drop now. So I've done a bit of preparation and put in a bit of cover over the more tender pants. I'll just show you what I've done. This is the strawberry cage and I had a close look and we have got quite a few flowers already open. So last year we did fall flower of the frost and lost a few with black eye. So rather than risk getting that again, I'll put a double layer of some debris netting and that should give them a bit of extra protection. Moving on into the coal frame, although we've got double glazed units on the top, I've actually popped a little candle in there, I don't know if you can see it. That's nestled between some ceramic pots and uh, I'm sure that'll keep that nice and toasted during tonight. 
the 30 litre containers of the first early potatoes are poking the reds up. So I've put a couple of layers of heavy duty fleece over the top. And I've also got a, a net cage and I'll just pop some debris netting over there so I'll give them a bit more extra protection. I'll just pop you into the greenhouse and show you what's been happening in there. Along the top under this bubble wrap is the tomatoes, the Crimson Crush, and you saw those earlier. And the same with some ones in there, that's about another five Crimson Crush. I've got a couple of large candles going in here. There's one over there, one over there. Inside here, the rest of the onions, they should stand up okay and quite resilient to the cool weather. So, two candles in, some bubble wrap and fleece. And that should see us okay for tonight. And so that's it. We're all tucked up and ready for the cold night. Hopefully they'll survive and save with the extra couple of candles. I think we might uh, keep the frost at bay. So that's about it for this one. Many thanks for watching again. If you're new to the channel, think about it in the bell, the subscribe button, so you know what's coming on. So that's all from me. I'm Nigel Jukes, and many thanks for watching the Muddy Boots Allotment Channel. See you soon.